That's right, the topic of today's video is colors and color schemes specifically in relation to UI UX. Now, I know a lot of you absolutely are terrible at picking colors. I know this because I've done so many different design reviews, literally thousands, and colors is a difficult thing if you're new or relatively new to UI UX design. And so today I'm going to show you a really cool tool. I featured it in the past, but I'd like to come back to this, you know, every year or so uh, to really help people figure out a way to choose colors that will really work well. And I'm going to do it in the context of this UI that you see right here. I designed this yesterday real quick for the purpose of this video. And what's cool is I have, uh, it's all Figma and I have the Figma community file available so that you can follow along just so I can show you how quick and easy it is to experiment with color schemes and everything's tied up just to four different Figma variables for the colors we'll just change them out and we'll see what happens all right everybody let's get started if you enjoyed this video check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI UX CSS and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy all right so first step coolers.co c-o-o-l ors.co click start the generator this is my favorite i there's so many different tools that make color schemes this is my favorite one and what you do is you basically hit the uh, space bar to cycle through these each one of these columns as you hover over them gives you the option to lock it uh, to copy the hex code to drag it left or right to compare it against other colors to favor it view shades and check contrast and before we get into that further I want you to go ahead and check the YouTube description, replicate this Figma file, open it up in your own Figma account, and then that way you can follow along and learn the best, okay? All right, so here it is, and you're gonna see two of these if I include them. This one has just have all the colors, uh, they're not tied to variables, so you can see the original, and then we're gonna start uh, doing that for each of the variations we create, and maybe we'll do like two or three. And so we wanna create a variation of this color scheme right here, utilizing coolers.co. Okay, let's get started. And the way this works is we take the slide, like the actual frame, and we'll see the selection colors over here, background type, foreground. So there's four different colors that we can experiment with. So we're gonna go back and let's say for instance, we wanna create a, maybe a light color scheme, like a real light where all the text is dark. Okay, maybe we'll use cream. So we're gonna lock this color right here. And when I hit the space bar, it's going to change other colors, but keep this one. And what I wanna do though, is I wanna save any colors that I like uh, in addition to it. And I think this is these two work very well. They are basically monochromatic. This one's a lot lighter. So they're in the same color spectrum. It's just different shades and that works well. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And I'm looking for other light colors that could potentially work well uh, with these. Now, of course, you do have to have a dark color, like for instance, black that sits on the light type as well. So you can't all just have, <laughs> you know, very light colors and only work at those. Um, I really like that blue over here. Now again, I wanna go with, for the remaining two, I wanna go with lighter colors and see how they kind of work out together. And if I come over here, I could take, for instance, this color co code and paste it there and then just do my own adjustments and we can drag this over to see how this fits in the context of these colors be, uh, on that left and right of it. So again, we could take this color picker and just find a shade that could work well with both of them. I think that shade right there works very well. So I'll lock that one. And I think everything's locked except for the very last one, which is red and I, it, or it's tomato rather. Let's, let's lock that too. So I'm gonna take this color or rather I'm going to click on this uh, copy hex so now we have the hex code copied and we're gonna go ahead and take the frame, select it, take background and type, click here to adjust it. And then at the very bottom where it says properties, you see the color code, go ahead and paste that in. So now it's keeping the original colors of the design over here because we didn't tie those to properties. So that's the first adjustment that we're gonna make. Now the next adjustment is what are we gonna use for this sidebar? Um, I'm not sure we could probably experiment with a couple of the options uh, that might work well So if I hover over my desktop icon, I can kind of get an idea of where maybe I want to take this for that sidebar um, 
if I want this type to be all black, I need to use a lighter color here as well. So I guess what we could do is, let's go ahead and take a sidebar. This is called primary color, although it's showing up as green. That's kind of strange. Uh, and we'll adjust this. So let me take primary color. I'm not sure if this is uh, accurate. It might be an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So never mind that. We're going to adjust that primary color too. Let's try this one for the heck of it. Let's copy that. And I'm going to go back to primary color, adjust it, paste that in. All right. So now we're going to make sure that we take our foreground type and I'm just going to make the adjustment here to black. There we go. Okay, so we're making progress. We're getting a very vastly different type of color scheme working here. So what was the other color? We have like that tomato color that could possibly be used here. So let's go back to colors. I'll go ahead and grab this. Just copy that little button right there or the code rather. And then for secondary, let's make sure we select this. To, yeah, there we go. And we'll just make the adjustment here. Okay. No, no, that was the wrong one. I'm sorry. This is called what? Why is that doing that? That's secondary. Yeah, there's something strange happening with my colors, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and go back, adjust this, paste this in. There we go. All right, sorry about that. All right, we're actually making progress. It's a very interesting uh, sort of design. Um, I'm not sure if I like these being the same color as this. Now, that's how I designed it here, and it works there. But for this one, I don't know if I like this too much. Um, and I certainly don't like this up there. I think that's tied to, yes, let's see here, secondary. There we go. So what we could do is we could also take these individually and we could adjust, we could just disconnect that. And I'm curious if we used it at some other colors here. Yeah, that blue actually might work. So if we grab this blue and I just paste that in and we take the icons on top and make those white. There we go. So that's a potential. I mean, all the colors, they contrast pretty well. And look at that. So this is definitely something you could throw out as a, you know, an alternative color scheme just to see what people think. Um, so we'll do this again in another context. So let me go ahead and Let's see, what I'll do is simply grab, this is my original, and I'll paste that in over here. Stop doing that, Gary. <laughs> All right, and then this one, I'm just gonna sever these. Okay. So for the next one, let's do a color scheme that's, actually, I really don't like these blue ones here, but yeah, no big deal. What I really like, what I want to do in this time is just like make a real dark, a, a much darker UI and perhaps monochromatic, meaning we're going to stick within the same color scheme and just use different shades. So this is another approach that you can use when coming up with color schemes. So if I go back to colors, and we'll just have, it's, this, is, this would literally just be a matter of determining what colors, uh, what hue that we want to stay in. So let's refresh this real quick. All right. Um, let's go with, I know it's going to come up in a second. I think what I'll do is just grab it myself. I think we'll go with a color that is here. I know, I'm a little bit crazy. Actually, yeah. I'm experimenting, sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's go with this. We're just gonna do this, because I already did the purple, that's why I changed my mind. Um, and so I'll lock this one, and and really, what I all I can do is, like I don't even have to do the space bar thing, I could just paste this one in here and then make adjustments here. So we'll use this for like, I, oh, I said I wanted to use really dark, didn't I? So we're gonna use darker hues for a lot of this. So we're gonna keep this one right here. 
we're gonna adjust this one. I'm gonna paste that in. This time, you know, maybe we'll go with a real dark hue. It's not black, but it's it's pretty close. We'll lock these. Let's copy that and we'll paste that in and then perhaps we'll come over here. Again, notice I'm not moving the hue slider down here. I'm just adjusting this air, this stuff over here, which, which controls tone, darkness, brightness, value, all that stuff. I Let's see. We do need a light color for foreground elements, so something like this for sure. So, and when I say foreground elements, I mean like type and stuff like that. Um, you can have an accent color as well if you want. I think we could do that. Um, so let's let's go ahead and just copy this code, paste it in. Accent color can be analogous if you want it to be. Something that was really bright, perhaps. How about that? I think that works well. Nice. So now we're going to go ahead and take the background. So the, we'll say this maybe is the background. So we'll copy this color. And hopefully this stuff works. Background to type. Let's see. Okay, and I'm gonna adjust this. There we go. And then we're gonna take this is primary color. Right now these aren't really linked up correctly, but if I click on it, it'll fix it. Okay, and then for the primary color, we'll just use another shade perhaps. So um, I think maybe we'll go with this one. So we're gonna copy the hex and we'll just primary color. All right, and then this one here can be, if I get this open and we look at this preview right there, um, maybe this blue right here, we'll copy that. And make sure you stick around because I'm gonna show you a way to do everything just manually uh, in a second here. So now this is gonna be, what is this? This is primary, okay, so primary, we'll take that, adjust it, paste it in. No, 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 that's the one. That's not the one I wanted to do. It's this color right here. Okay. Up here, let me fix this as well. Okay. Now we did have an accent color, correct? Yes, this over here. I'm wondering where I wanna use this. So if I look at the colors currently, I'm not too happy with what's going on here just yet. Um, I may make some adjustments on my own. I'll show you how to do that. And I think what we could do is, you know, to get, really get this this color over here. Well, if I want this to be a, a much darker UI, I wouldn't want to make it a, like a vibrant color like this. So I think what we could do at this point, if we're, just to show you how to do stuff manually, um, if we grab this here and we, we edit it, we get the color picker up. And I'm gonna move down just so I can kind of see things a little bit better. And we could kind of come up with something that works. And the way I like to do is take the background color, just grab it, and you can just slightly make, you know, very minute, s small adjustments to the color. So, you know, we could even go darker down here if we want. And this is real dark, all right? So that means our type sitting on top needs to be a bit more visible. And again, we could just grab all this and then I can disable those. Oopsie, I think I'm mis mixing some stuff up here. Let me, uh... yeah, what I'll have to do is select each one of these. Oh, I know what the issue was. I was grabbing a, uh, an arrow that's a stroke and it was kind of screwing stuff up. So I'm gonna disable that. We're gonna make these white. There are those arrows. There we go, okay. Now, we're not done yet. This has a little bit of a different hue, it feels like, so I'm gonna sever that connection. We'll grab this, and again, what we'll do is like we'll, we'll experiment here. And 
And again, I'm just trying to find something that I like, given that this is going to be a pretty dark UI. Trying to keep most of the panels light. We can really get our accent color, though, up here in these right here. And I think that will help tie. And what would what makes most sense? Well, in this case, if we have a photograph or in which this is not vector, you know, we could grab that color and it really brings out these colors right here. Now up here, I have to, it probably makes sense to use this primary color that's been created down here. And maybe do a color like sort of button right there. And there you go. Just a few different, uh, two different UIs uh, or color schemes created for these UIs uh, in relatively short amount of time. Uh, and, and using coolers.co as a starting point uh, is, is really beneficial just to help spur different ideas uh, as you make your way through creating uh, your, 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 your color scheme and your UI. I'm having, as you can see, you could just have endless amounts of fun with color, as long as you have, understand just a few of the key concepts. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, definitely check out designcourse.com. The UI UX course has color, a bunch of color topics, and you could take that now for a discounted price in the YouTube description, along with parity pricing, and yeah. Uh, that was fun. I want to do more color tutorials here pretty soon because there's some other things I definitely want to show you. All right, everybody. I will see you soon. Goodbye.